Um, we are continuing with uh, lecture number four of our uh, annual uh, lecture for the transport system, uh, sorry, system dynamic society transport special interest group. Yeah. This year we are looking into the how qualitative modeling and its application to transport research. Right? And in this fourth lecture, we are honored to have Claudia Andretto, a PhD candidate from ITRL or Integrated Transport Research Lab from KTH uh, with us today. She will share with us um, her research on uh, barrier and potential of City Hub, a system dynamic approach. So yes, um, I hand over to Andre, uh, Cla sorry, Claudia, who will uh, present her research for 30 minutes. And then after that, we will have a question and answer and also discussion. So over to you, Claudia, thank you. Yes, um, thank you so much for the introduction. Um, I hope you can see my screen all right. And um, yes, so uh, I'm Claudia and I'm here today to present you my research on uh, system dynamics and the application of it to the problem of city hubs. Um, just before I start quickly about myself, um, so I started, my university experience in Italy, where I'm originally from, where I did a bachelor in energy. Uh, and then I did a master in energy for smart cities. So not really too much related to transport. But then I started my PhD on uh, system level effects of different practices on the sustainability of the urban logistics system. And uh, I am in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, uh, doing my research at KTH. And despite my education is not too much about transport nor system dynamics, um, that's what I'm doing in the PhD. So I'm applying system dynamics to this transport uh, issue. Um, and just as a side note, I, I am quite uh, an active person. And I can also say that system dynamics has helped me in many different ways in my sort of day-to-day -day life. Um, so that's that's something that I think it's really good as well. Um, but yes, to go back to some more um, academic <laughs> talk. So a little bit on the context of my research, um, and then I will move on to uh, the 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 methodology. So I the the research context is the urban environment and the transportation of goods within the urban environment. So with city logistics, um, I mean the transportation of goods within the city boundaries. And we can see that sort of the overall problem is that this system is currently unsustainable. It brings different externalities, such as noise, emissions, and congestions. Um, so the question is, how can we make it more sustainable? Uh, and we see that many cities in, in Europe, but all over the world, have different visions of how a city would look like. And I'm based in Stockholm, as I mentioned, and the vision of Stockholm for 2040 is to have fossil-free transport solutions and a decrease in congestion. Um, and this, they um, envision it to be achieved through increased efficiency and increased coordination. Um, so these are the goals uh, from like the public sector perspective to decrease emissions and uh, congestion. And in this context, um, a lot has been done so far. So we have different, um, what I call urban logistic practices. And these practices are uh, introduced in the system to sort of help um, achieve this sustainable future. But the problem is that we see quite big focus on environment in the uh, in the literature. So we often uh, find practices that are targeting mainly CO2 emission reduction and and of course also uh, congestion, but it's it's not as uh, as mentioned. And we see that there is uh, in this system we have very diverse actors and stakeholders and the policy setting is very important. Um, but at, after looking at the literature, we can also conclude that despite quite a lot has been done so far, 
we see that sustainability is not really improving at the pace we want it to be in the cities. Um, so we are struggling to achieve the goals that we have set for the future. Uh, so my research is focusing on how can we try to um, to make sure that we reach this future and to overcome the barriers, the potential barriers that these urban practices have. And the, the focus of um, my work then is one of these practices, which is consolidation. Um, and specifically uh, the potential solution of uh, introducing city hubs into an urban logistics system. And I just want to give you an idea of what we mean with city hubs. Uh, so if the system of today looks roughly a little bit like this, so where we have that uh, different companies have a consolidation center outside the city um, and they deliver in the city um, with their own vehicles, what we envision is to have um, to have fewer, to reduce the vehicle kilometers traveled in the city by including uh, by introducing a city hub in the system. So introducing a place where uh, goods can be cross-consolidated between companies. And by looking at the literature, we see that this could be a very, this has quite a high potential with uh, decreasing in distance traveled uh, and increasing fill rate. And sort of these two combined uh, both bring a reduction of uh, kilometer traveled. And um, we also see a potential in uh, reducing the delivery time um, because mainly because of the decrease in distance traveled. Um, so this said, what we what we try to do then is to try to understand, first of all, what why isn't this something that we see in the cities of today? So what are the barriers? of implementing such a scheme and how could this transition look like from a system where we don't have hubs to a system where we have hubs and trying to understand the requirements for a successful implementation. And we, we try to do that by using system thinking and specifically system dynamics modeling. And the reason for um, thinking that this is a good method is because we are trying to um, understand the transition over time of the system. And because, as I mentioned before, this is a complex system where we have diverse stakeholders with diverse needs. And with system dynamics, we can also try to better understand the impact of policies. So um, what we did then was to try to find out a method or a combine, combine different methods for qualitative data collection. So we started with collecting relevant literature um, and, and we did at first a group model building workshop um, with an expert group from the project that uh, I'm working with. And from this, we developed a problem statement. So we tried to um, also sort of at the beginning of the workshop, we tried to make the stakeholders understand that we had we have the we have some barriers in the system and um to try to um to try to achieve the goals that we have set for the future we need to try to understand how to overcome them um and and in the group model building workshop we did different activities that then allowed us to make a preliminary model uh which was also based uh, yeah, on, on the literature that we had uh, collected that far. Uh, and after the preliminary, after building this preliminary model, we went through a round of interviews, which were done uh, with uh, an interview expert group, which was actually different people than the workshop expert group. Um, and by doing that, we kind of made uh some tweaking in the model we found in the interviews we were trying to ask the interviewees what they thought about the variables that we had chosen and we were trying to guide the questions uh mm -hmm. in a way that it could allow us to uh make sure that the structure of the model was sound uh now i'm going to go through 
more in detail what we did in the group model building workshop and in the interviews. So uh, in the group model building workshop, we started by introducing ourselves and introducing system dynamics. Um, and we introduced the objectives of the workshops as to define the problem. So as I mentioned before, try to understand uh, to really define the problem and why the city hubs are not working uh, in the systems of today. And the other uh, key objective was to start defining the system variables and defining uh, relevant causal relationships. So um, we did actually, we did this workshop in uh, online setting and this was uh, at the end of 2020. So it was kind of, mm, not it if if now we could say that more people are uh, are very used to working with whiteboards with online whiteboards back then it was not that uh, that easy to do it uh, but we we managed and we also in, um we also done some introductory activities to try to make sure that the all of the stakeholders were on board with the with the tools that we were using um and we we had between 18 and 25 participants during the whole workshop uh, excluding the um the core modeling team and um of course we had to settle with the lowest number uh, which was at the end of the of the workshop and then we did three main activities in the workshops which were hopes and fears variable elicitation and causal loop diagrams um, I'm not really going into detail on those because we've used the basic scripts on uh, that are available on Scriptopedia. But the idea is that was that with the hopes and fears, we wanted to get the participants into their minds, into like the mindset of the of the of the project, and get them all on the same page. And uh, with the variable elicitation, we. Uh, we tried to find out what variables they thought were most important. And with the causal loop diagram activity, we wanted to try to find some causal links. Um, then after, after doing the workshop and after making this preliminary model, we then went to the interviews. And we used the semi-structure approach uh, when uh, carrying out the interviews. So we had different topics and we have we had uh, some overarching questions. Um, not all of the questions are connected to the model. Some of them were also to um, to understand, for example, the more in detail the barriers and the decision making process behind joining these um, these type of uh, schemes. And we also had so we had eleven uh, interviewees in total and we had diff slightly different scripts uh, depending on who we were interviewing to sort of get the most out of the participants um, and I tried to make this slide uh, to sort of compare the two methods and why the, why we thought that the combination of them um, was a very nice result um, so first of all uh, of course, the workshop has a variety of people involved in the interviews. We interviewed only one person at a time. Actually, in one of the interviews, we had two participants at the same time, but it was more like an exception. Uh, and, and these, of course, can help us uh, in different ways, because when we have many people, we, we also get uh, the, the benefits of the group work. Um, yeah, both of them were conducted online. As I said in the workshop, it was a little bit of a downside. I would say it would have been definitely better to conduct your activity in person. But for the interviews, it was quite fine. We could this enabled us to record the interviews quite uh, quite easily, and it was easier to then uh, review them. Um, and in terms of time, I think that this was one of the most most uh, the main feedback that we received for the, from the participants, um, they preferred to join interviews because they were shorter for them. Um, and I would say that one of the 
one of the worst part of the activity being online was that people were dropping in and out and they felt that that was okay. Um, and that was, um, I would say that that uh, hindered some of the activities at least. And uh, finally, we have that the output was quite different, of course. On one hand, we have quite divergent uh, results. So going in very different directions. And in the interviews, of course, we could steer the conversation to what we wanted to get from the interviews. Um, and we actually found quite a lot, because we had the diverse group in the workshop, uh, the opinion of the participants came out a little bit biased by the context they were in, while in the interview, because we we sort of protected their uh, results with anonymity, then people were more likely to speak up and really tell us their opinion. Uh, I think that these are quite like normal results, but it's nice to sort of compare them. And for us, we felt that the workshop was a good activity in the initial phase and the interviews was a good activity when we were trying to finalize uh, the diagram. Um, so uh, as a sort of summary of what methods we used to build the CLD that I'm about to show. Um, so as I said, we had the literature review and the group model building workshop um, and that we did with the workshop expert group. Then we had the interviews and actually in the interviews, as I said, we used the recording and the Joya method for um, analyzing the interviews. The two groups were different. Um, we had only one or two participants which were in both groups. Uh, then in addition to this, when we finished uh, build, uh, making the causal loop diagram, we also analyzed more data that came for the project. So the project that I'm working with um, in my PhD has uh, a lot of uh, different people working within with the area of city hubs. And so I was able to also use their data for um, further uh, confirmation of the structure of the causal loop diagram. Um, yes, and other two groups that were present sort of overall in the whole research was where the group core modeling team. Um, and we also have an advisory group within the project that we we try to meet very frequently to sort of uh, keep confirming that um, the results are uh, are sound. And in terms of output, we could say that at first, um, we we wanted to really motivate why should we study city hubs and not other concepts. And we found that this was interesting because of the barriers that there are. And it's an interesting problem to try to understand how to overcome them. Um, and then we used the interviews also to underlying the barriers and because most of the people were from Stockholm this could was also a good way to sort of contextualize it in the context of the city um, and then as output from the the last three steps we have the variable list and the causal relations uh, that are the main um, input to the causal loop diagram that we finally created so um, the result of this process was then this diagram that I'm about to show. Um, and this is a, this comes out of a simplification of the system, trying to make it as simple as possible and trying to highlight the loops that we think are uh, the most interesting. Um, so um, I mentioned at the beginning that the two goals that we are interested in are a reduction in emission and congestion. And here we decided to quantify congestion with the variable of kilometer driven. And the idea here is then to create a gap and goal structure uh, so that um, the public sector will be, uh, will be more willing to put funds into a system where the gap is higher. So the more we achieve, the more we get closer to achieving the goal, uh, 
the less the the less pressure it's felt by the public sector and they decide to put money into one solution which is the city hubs and as i mentioned before um the usage of the hubs uh brings different uh positive um impacts it in improves the fill rate reduces the route length and the delivery time and here we also added that we can potentially also enable the usage of more env environmentally friendly vehicles. So we see um, that by doing that, we decrease both the congestion and the CO2 emissions. And this is sort of the underlying assumption that city hubs can help uh, achieving these goals. And so here we can see that we have a balancing loop uh, of achieving the goals. Uh, and this is what sort of what the public sector is interested in. But if we look at it from the perspective of the logistic service providers or, or of the companies that are actually carrying out the transport, um, we see that what they're interested in is their operational cost. Um, and therefore, we see that we have, we have that because we improve these parameters, we will have a decrease in operational cost, uh, which is then uh, seen as a, yeah, as a positive thing by the logistic service providers that will be then willing to adopt and use this service or this system. But, and, and here we can see that how, for how the world model works right now, um, we can achieve a better increase, a better efficiency the more we use these hubs. And therefore this is a reinforcing loop. So the more people, the more companies join the system, the more we can increase the efficiency. So the more potential there is for increasing the efficiency um, and therefore the cost goes down. Uh, but on the other hand, we also have an addition of costs, which wasn't which wasn't really mentioned so far. Because of course, if we are adding this step into the system, we have probably we have a third party logistic provider that will um, will operate the system, and they have or will operate the hubs, and they will have to have some profit. And therefore, there is an additional cost here that we need to take into account. And what we the assumption that we made here is that the logistic service providers will, the, the ones that are adopting and they're using this uh, city hub uh, system, they will share the cost of using the system. And therefore also here we can find a reinforcing loop that the more people join, the lower the cost uh, for, for each one of them. And I tried to summarize this into an even simpler, um, scheme that we try to use when communicating with the stakeholders. So we basically have three loops um, that are that are um, sh uh, showing dynamics in the system. The first one is this balancing loop that this is the reason why we want to introduce these hubs. So we have that the more um, these hubs will bring improvements in efficiencies, which will reduce the externalities. And on the other hand, we have that this improvement in the inefficiency is also good from the logistic service provider perspective because it reduces the costs. However, we also have that the hubs include or put new costs into the system that the logistic service providers will have to account for. And the problem here is that we see that there is a delay here into from when the hubs are available to when we really see the impacts of, on efficiency and the impacts on costs. And we see these, and these efficiencies impacts are uh, very much dependent on how many adopters we have and how much we use the hubs. Um, so we have different dynamics in these two, in, in these two loops, which, uh, which probably bring that since the blue loop is acting immediately, the logistic service provider will see that the hubs are actually uh, a more costly solution for them and they will not want to join. So how do we solve the problem that we have a delay here? Well, we tried to think about it and how can we, how can we sort of push the adoption of this, uh, of this scheme from the outside and we sort of found uh, two perspectives that we can take. 
The first one is that we can try to push the service providers from by using pressure from other stakeholders. So either from the receivers, so making the receivers change address. And this is something that has been seen uh, before. So using a care of address from the receivers. And the other one is to try to combine, convince the shippers to sort of oblige the logistics service providers to use the hubs. So um, make them use the hubs from the shippers perspective. And the other way that we can act is to um, make sure that the logistics service providers see the value by incentivizing the first phase of the, of the implementation when we see that the costs are higher until we have enough uh, usage of the hubs uh, that the system is actually, so the, use, the using of the hub is actually cheaper than the current system. So this uh, is sort of the, the status of the qualitative uh, work that we've done so far. And what we're doing now and the future work is to make this model a quantitative model. Uh, and we are trying to do that using, again, we've done already two workshops on trying to get data from it and trying to really validate each and every relationship and each and every equation in the model. And the idea is then to understand which of the input data is most uncertain and to try to define different scenarios um, where we could actually, uh, where, where, where we can use the uh, uncertainties to make the scenarios. And of course, we want to also test the policies that we've just described now, which are public incentives on one hand or incentivizing the receivers or the shippers in some way to make the, um, the hubs a suitable option. And in, in this sense, to, to use the, uh, during the workshops that I've done, I've used a uh, interface, an online interface where I can basically show in more detail uh, the model and uh, where I also have some uh, simple, um, I introduce simple variation of the input um, and we can see basically the results directly. So I'm trying to use this um, this sort of interface to, to also collect uh, more data and more, um, more information about the model. Yes, um, so this brings me to the conclusion. Um, so, from my previous work as well, I can con we concluded that there is quite a big focus on environment and there is a lack of a holistic perspective when we talk about sustainability, uh, especially in the urban logistic context. Um, and by using system dynamics and by using specifically this combination of method, we thought, we thought that it was really good to build a causal loop diagram um, and combining the different methods, we really felt like we got the most out of the experts um, and also out of the methods in general. And as I said, uh, planned future work, it's mainly working on the quality, quantitative model, sorry, and uh, doing scenario analysis and evaluating uh, these potential policies. Yes, thank you so much for the attention. And this is my email, but I guess that we have some time for discussion now as well. Mm, thank you very much, Claudia. That's uh, wonderful and interesting research. So thank you yes. for, uh, on behalf of everyone. Thank you for sharing this. And I think we can have some question now, you know, uh, in the chat box or please unmute yourself and switch on video and we can also discuss. And I see that Sinap, um, already switch on her video. Do you want to make a remark or have any question? Yeah. Or anyone else? I saw in one chat. So this approach appear very thorough. I do agree with that and very methodological as well. And congratulations, how much time has it this taken so far? Yeah, that's a very good question. Thank you for that. Um, so I've discussed um also with other people about how much how long it takes to organize a group model building workshop um from my experience 
for example, the workshop um, from the from the initial uh, phase of the project to when we did the workshop, it was about four months. Um, we wanted to have it quite at the beginning to just um, understand uh, understand the problem at an early stage. Then we did the interviews about one year after that. Uh, and I also have to say that in that one year, I I mean, of course, I was also doing other uh, other tasks. And mainly I was trying to get acquainted with the literature to try to understand that logistic context a little bit better. Um, so, and then it was like about two months into the review process for the interviews. So I would say like one year and a half in total, but considering that we have, yeah, we, we, this was not the only focus of the of the group. Thank you. I hope this answer to John Rodat. So anyone else uh, remark or question? I wanted, hello, Claudia. Hi. I wanted uh, to ask about any um, like real case of City Hub in the mm -hmm. Stockholm or other cities. Yeah. Uh, so we, yeah. So the that's a good question. We uh, we analyzed or like we uh, we reviewed many case studies. Um, I think like recently I read a re I read a report and I think they collected something about over a hundred case studies uh, of seed calves. Um, so there are a lot of, there is a lot of uh, input out there. Um, the problem is that it's very context dependent, uh, very dependent on the situation of the city. Um, and therefore that makes it difficult to sort of compare the results, I would say. Um, and in Stockholm, there are currently different um, uh, projects that concern consolidation and I also have to say that this approach this city hub approach that I described today with like cross consolidation of the uh, of the packages is something that it's really difficult to achieve but we do see other types of consolidation and other types of city hubs uh, for example in Stockholm there is one case that it's going very well where all of the deliveries from the municipality side are consolidated but that case doesn't really maybe go into this uh, as much because what we are expecting here is to consolidate deliveries from different providers mm -hmm. um, uh, but yes so the plan is to use these types of e data for as an input for the qualitative model quantitative model sorry or for va validation, maybe. Yeah, exactly. Mm. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. And I think this uh, also a question from myself. Uh, you know, by involving stakeholder and you know people who are involved in City Hub, does the process actually change the way they, yeah, they perceive? Or did you measure mm. this uh, kind of um, dynamic in ch that the process change how they perceive about City Hub or? their perspective on it, on the concept yes actually we uh we did some um so uh, yeah uh, maybe that's something that i should add on the difference between the two uh the two methods because mm -hmm. i would say that at the end of the workshop there were many participants that still were disagreeing with each other so i would say that maybe there was not a consensus between everyone in the verb or in the online room but it was definitely so that everyone was looking at it from the same perspective somehow, or like the perspective, the perspectives were um, clear from everyone. And but w w when I remember when conducting the interviews, it was a lot less. Um, th this this was this dynamic was obviously not there. Mm -hmm. So we we had that. A lot of participants in the interviews, like some of the participants of the interviews were not, did not agree that City Hubs was a good solution. And yeah, there was no way from us to really convince them that it was otherwise. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah, I think the disagreement is also interesting that it brought, it, it surfaced that, right? It become, make it more kind of apparent. Yeah. And I think also the, the other interesting um, thing for me is that you have very, very insightful, uh, you know, you, you draw from your research, the very insightful approach. Did you report that back to the, not, not approach, result, but you, did you report that back to the, um, the participant and how did how, what what was their reaction yeah so we had mm, yes so we had a sort of a bumpy process maybe in the project mm -hmm. <laughs> with communication we did we did communicate it through like this sort of uh, internal reports um but I would say we could have definitely have done better in that in that sense. Mm -hmm. Now what we're trying to do is to include everyone again in this next step um, of uh, making the model uh, quantitative. Uh, and now I've already started these second sort of workshop series, I could say. And it, I it's 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 um, it's a little bit harder to. Uh, to do this again mm -hmm. almost two years after it was done at first so i can say that maybe that was something that i would say we could have done a little bit better mm -hmm. because at the end of the workshops uh, at the end of the first workshop everyone was very uh, happy about the results um so yeah it could yeah. have been yeah <laughs> To write on that enthusiastic yeah, wave, exactly. right? Yeah, I understand. I think we let's go to the chat box. We have I right, let's do these two questions together. Did you have any logistic support for conducting the group work and also yeah, the model that you saw in IC system website? If it's available, we'd be great to share the link. Uh yes, so uh I have added the link to this presentation. So but mm. I can also maybe share it in the chat. I don't know. Yeah, I think while you're doing, oh well, I, uh, or we can circulate later. I think yeah. I was going to say while we're doing that, let's read the question, but then you wouldn't have read the question. So the next one from Sunio, I think there are two questions. Um, let's read them together. How familiar are the stakeholders, those mm -hmm. who were part of the workshop and those who were interview of the concept of City Hub? And can you summarize again the main barrier of the implementation mm -hmm. and how to yeah. overcome them? Yeah. Yes, so uh, for the first question, they were very familiar so all of the stakeholders that we interviewed were people from the logistics sector so all of them are uh, were very familiar with the topic um, and some of them had very strong opinions on okay this is something that we believe it's not gonna work um, or yeah or we believe that it's something that has a huge potential um, and yeah I haven't really I haven't really dealt like very deep into the main barriers, but the idea the, the main barrier is that we don't have a functioning business model. So the problem is that this the cost structure is is very hard to it's very hard to define a cost structure that works. Um and on top of that, we have that the system is a very competitive one, uh, where the companies run on very low profit margins. And it's very difficult to convince uh, logistics service providers to join a scheme if they're not uh, sure of the benefits that it will bring. And I think that this relates, again, to this delay of seeing the, the impacts and the benefits from the, from the scheme. Uh, and in terms of how to overcome the barriers, it is kind of what we are trying to to achieve with the next steps and with with the introduction of these potential policies as i we've called them here but we could also put them as sort of interventions that we could have in the system or decisions that the stakeholders take thank you you may you also mention uncertainty as part of the next step that you yes. can you maybe elaborate on on that yes. point a little bit yeah. yeah one of the things that maybe i haven't mentioned yet is that in the urban goods distribution system, it's very, very uh, hard to get reliable data. And it's very hard to understand how the system is currently. So the current status of the system is very unclear. Um, 
so there are huge uncertainties in terms of um, the input parameters that we have in this model. Uh, and therefore, I think that an uncertainty analysis or like Monte Carlo simulations can help us also understand where, where what of these uh, uncertainties are the ones that matter the most. So we can also focus the future work into making the model quantitative. Uh, we can focus our uh, resources on finding the values for the most, um, for the value, va for for the input data that it's most sensitive. Thank you. Yeah. Any other remark or question from others? I must say, I really, uh, yeah, I really enjoyed this presentation. So, you know, I'm sure others do, and it triggered me a lot of questions. So I can continue <laughs> with my question if no one else would like to. Mm. Otherwise, is there a success? You know, you you obviously, um, yeah, talk to interview and also involve them into this focus group. Would you say is there kind of like uh, uh, what are the vision of success of a city hub? for all these stakeholder of course you mentioned they disagree right with some of yeah. with, whether even there is a kind of valid validity in doing it in mm -hmm. the first place but it's for those who think that there are you know um yeah a reason to do um, a hub is there a kind of like vision of success and if it's if so what what are those yeah i think that the first so when we talk to the to the city of stockholm they want to see a decrease in emissions. Mm -hmm. That is their first, like that is their main goal. So that's also why I say that there is a focus on environment. Then when we talked to the uh, to the owners of the buildings and to the owners of the areas uh, of the city center, then they they have this other vision that they maybe they don't care too much about how p much pollution there is but they don't like how the system looks like today because there are too many trucks so they want to see the trucks gone and i would say that the city also supports this vision as well mm -hmm. um even though maybe it's not their first priority so their vision of success is a system where we have cleaner air and in general where the transportation of goods is invisible to the people that live in the city or is as invisible as possible <laughs> and i do think that this type of scheme is something that it could be very useful and if, if we look at it from the from the carriers that actually believe that this is a good idea they also think that delivering in these parts of the city is hell for them because mm -hmm. it's there are a lot of congestion there is never parking and they always have to get like this uh the fines and so so it's really stressful for the drivers as well so they also want a less stressful environment to work in and one thing that i haven't really mentioned because it wasn't really in the scope but i mean city hubs can enable many other um concepts such as off-peak deliveries uh cargo bike deliveries and um can enable also a faster shift to electric vehicles. So I think that within almost all of the stakeholders agree that this could be, that this has a very big potential. The problem is that we, that we face with this type of uh, system is that we have a very big inertia by the fact that the system as it is now works and it yeah. works almost well for almost everybody. And yeah. so it's very, very hard to drive a change. Mm. Yes. Thank you, Claudia. Also, maybe I, I should ask you, do you have a question for us or you know, the <laughs> audience? If you want to uh, get some feedback, I'm sure our audience would be more than happy to. Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, I have a lot of questions, but um, I mean, I would say that I've already mentioned it briefly to you before mm -hmm. we started, but um now i'm i'm finding it a little bit hard to um to communicate with with the stakeholders 
as especially if they have already a view of the system and if they sometimes it's difficult to make people think uh, uh, in a system thinking perspective and system dynamics perspective uh, so if you have any tips on how to better communicate with the stakeholders and uh, not let them think it too 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 linearly maybe <laughs> or yeah yeah anyone have a tips on that that's a yeah, really good question i would say I think we all do admit that, you know, to get people to think in system thinking way is really difficult, right? But once if they do, that's uh, something that we is hold into our perspective. And bound rationality is also quite difficult to get people out from that mindset. You, like you, what you have mentioned, you know, that um, if there's a, if the system run well, if, if the ongoing is okay, you know, why change, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can, I'm, I'm personally can continue with my, uh, Paul said, uh, thank you very much. And also John, yeah, so a very positive feedback there. I'm of, I'm of course can continue with my personal question, <laughs> but I think just for an interest of time, perhaps, yeah, um, we could, thanks Claudia today for your presentation. I think it's really uh, terrific and also inspiring uh, how you use a GMB to apply and you know, to gain insight from the stakeholder on this um, topic of City Hub. So I think we wish you all the best with the next step for this research. And okay. we're curious to have to hear, hear from you, you know, in the time to come, uh, the update on this. Project. And I, I can share the presentation with you, I guess. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. we will put that on the um, our SIG website. So thank you all for attending this and also to uh, for, you know, really lively and also many questions in the chat box and also in person. I wish you all a nice day onward. And yes, this is the last of our uh, SIG uh, web, um, webinar this year so yeah we hope to continue in the next year if you have any you know, interesting topic or you know speaker that you would like to suggest please uh, recommend them to us and you know how to research via our website yeah thank you very thank much, you so much.